Hello everyone, WarnightGamer4 here, back again with another challenge run video. Let me keep the intro brief this time. Bloodhound Step. Like Quick Step, but better. It has 16 iframes, asterisk. The reason behind the asterisk is because it loses iframes when it's spammed. And has 5 recovery frames as long as you have FP. It's still probably one of the best evasive Asha War in the game. So this run is going to be pretty easy as long as I don't get knocked down. And as before, there's gonna be no rolling in this Elden Ring challenge run. If I do, then I must lose all my runes as punishment. Okay, that's enough intro. Let's get right into the game. To start off, I go to the front of Murkwater Cave to initiate Yura's quest. Tell me, Mr. Owl, what do you see with those special eyes? Ah uh, yes, one of the weapons I'm gonna be using in this run, the Lance. Thank you, Mr. Owl. But in order to properly wield it, I level up myself a bit. And now I can help Yura again by bullying the Raven Mount Assassin. It was very easy to knock him down with Charge 4th. Now I speak with Yura on the bridge. Then start collecting the Dectus Medallion pieces for the Dectus Lift. But before I head to Altus Plateau, I head to the Weeping Peninsula to fight one of the Knight's Calvary here. And with my lance ready, I charge the enemy. And this fight consisted of a whole lot of riding in circles. Eventually I take the field boss down and get rewarded with the Knight Rider Flail. The second weapon I'm gonna be using in this run. Now I level up my HP a tiny amount. Play with the Flail a bit as I rarely use them in my challenge runs. Then head to the second church America to obtain this game's version of the washing pole, the Nagakiba. That's how you pronounce it, right? And after dying to a let me speak to your manager roar of a Karen, I play around with the new katana and realize that its reach is insane. I can see that this is one busted katana. Thanks game, I hate it. I can see that this could be very annoying to fight against in player versus player. I'm pretty happy that I stopped doing PvP stuff at Dark Souls 3. Anyways, I head to Summon Water Village in order to get the Green Turtle Talisman, as I know teleporting around the enemy is going to take up stamina. Don't want to lose stamina around the bosses now, do I? Now it's time for some upgrade materials, so into the Rayo Lucario Crystal Tunnel I go to get the first smithing stone bell from the Crystallian boss. And after a bloody fight with a Militiaman enemy at the Sealed Tunnel, I open the chest up and obtain the second smithing stone bell. Then I buy a bit of fashion. I have bigger plans for my attire, but it'll do for now. Also get a ton of smithing stone. Upgrading three weapons simultaneously costs a pretty amount of runes, which means I have to go farm for a bit. With my weapons upgraded to plus 12 now, I level up, then start farming for a bit of drip. I farm the same and deprived perfumer here at the village of the Albanarix for about 20 minutes. And what I got from this depraved hippie was a whole bunch of grass, moss, and head wraps. What I'm here for is the leg and chest armor. Drip status is almost complete, but I'm still missing one more piece. And I ain't getting that till after Morgoth, unfortunately. Now there's only one last thing to do before I start to fight bosses. Which is the most important part of the run, and that's obtaining the Nothing Personnel Ash of War. So I overstock in arrows, get the talisman that increases my arrow damage, then cheese the Knight's Calvary near the rise at Dragon Barrow. I could have done it without the poison, but it would have taken a lot longer. But I at least have to show some skill here in the video, so have a couple of headshots. With the now Headless Horseman eliminated, I get the Bloodhound Step Ash of War. Going to need a few lost Ash of Wars to place them on all my weapons. Comparing Bloodhound Step to when it first came out, they really nerfed the distance on this. It's quite a downgrade, but it's still gonna get the job done. Ah, I remember flying around the map with this dodge ability. 
It's also one of the key factors that allowed me to beat Melania in my first ever playthrough of the game when it first came out. Anyways, that's enough nostalgia. With the lance equipped, it's time to fight Margit. With a dash here and a dash there, he goes down without much of a flare. Although a lot of carelessness got me hit a few times in the battle. Now fight against Margit took only about 1 minute and 30 seconds. And after skipping his vengeful dialogue after sitting on the grace, go out and get the axe talisman and the spiked cracked tear at Mistwood. Now it's time to storm the castle by taking fire bombs to the face and getting cleaved in the back. And at the end of the area is Godric the Grafted. Not going to show much of the fight as he went down fast and easy. It only took about 1 minute and 45 seconds. It also took him a bit to realize that he died. And with Godric down, I go and activate his rune, which is pretty much the best rune for early game. Then head to the Shoot First and Ask Questions Later Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Which unlike Stormvale Castle, I cut through the defenses with my glorious Nippon Steel folded over a thousand times. This place might hold scholars, but to my character they are nothing but low IQ fools. They studied their books while I studied the blade. Man, that is cringy. Anyways, after awarding Moongrim the elevator guard with the You Tried medal and nominated him for the Darwin Award, I go and fight the Queen Bee of the school. First phase of Nala is kind of a non-factor in this whole boss fight, just a small roadblock in the grand scheme of things. However, second phase Runala is much more scary to fight. But luckily, after nearly losing the first attempt, I just looped her pretty easy. These two phases only took about 2 minutes and 4 seconds in total. With Renala down, I go and sell the remembrances I obtain, level up my character, Get some good old boiled prawns and crabs from Best Bro Blackguard. Ah, uh, nothing like some good old shrimp on the barbie. Except everything is boiled in this situation. With the bonus defense obtained, I head over to Volcano Manor Prison Town to glide right through the lava, stick my long lance straight into a snake, then fight the godskin Fat Man. With Bloodhound Step in my arsenal, he was very easy to take down. Easy staggers. Easy dodges. Easy damage. Pretty easy cheesy. Moving forward, I die to my worst enemy, gravity. Honestly thought there were some stairs there, but it was after the ladder. Now before I go and fight Rykard, I quickly do a bit of Kenneth and Nefeli's quest for later. Also pick up the Ritual Sword Talisman for increased damage at full health. Then I level up, and now it's time to fight Rykard. I'm fighting him pretty early in the challenge run as he isn't much of a hassle for me as long as I can get the gimmick weapon he provides. Also his remembrance gives 50,000 runes which is a pretty good boon as I can make copies of it. For the first phase I required proper positioning as I wanted to save Bloodhound Step for the other part of the fight. Also barely survived with 1 HP in this phase. The second phase went by smoother even though there were explosions and skulls flying everywhere. Really, the Great Serpent Spear makes this fight easy as long as you time your attacks right. Like if he wants to do his giant Rancor attack, I just hit him with the Spears Asher War, then go crazy wailing on him.
This fight against Rykar took about 7 minutes and 29 seconds. It's a shame that I can't change the Ash of War on this. Would have loved to use it as a main weapon in this run. Now if Rykar's Remembrance in possession, I take down a giant stone turtle in order to make a duplicate. And after popping the runes in my inventory, I level up quite a large amount. Then I proceed to fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel by eating my Physic Flask. Just took an absolute chomp out of that thing. It actually confused me enough to go and restart my attempt when I realized what I did. For this fight, I just flew right through his attacks. I want nothing personnel, kid, to an extreme degree. No mercy was shown. The fight against the Draconic Tree Sentinel took about 1 minute and 43 seconds to complete. With the field boss down, I just thrust my way through the capital. Also picked up the Ritual Shield Talisman for bonus defense and full health. Then fight against Godfrey's Phantom, and even though I destroyed him in the second attempt, he did beat me in the first attempt due to not being used to how slow the lance is. So to relieve a bit of stress, I fight the poor black knife outside the bedchamber. Just pure staggering against the assassin. He didn't even stand a chance. Now before I fight Morgoth, I go back to Volcano Manor to quickly pick up the dagger talisman for a bit more critical damage. Fighting Morgoth this time around was pretty fun. With both of us having high mobility, there was a lot of back and forth against him. But I did get hit by some easy to avoid attacks. But after teleporting behind him, I hit him one last time, ending the fight in about 3 minutes and 39 seconds. Before I go forward, I drop a little gift from Morgoth, then get the road medallion from Melina, which lets me continue to the second part of the game, and allows me access to the Zamor ruins to get the third smithing stone bell. Finally, time for a rune expensive upgrade that leads my weapon to plus 18. With that done, I go and challenge Radon to a one-on-one -on -one battle. Might have been a bit overprepared for this fight as I sliced up his health pretty quickly. With some stance break and critical damage ending the fight, Radon goes down in about 1 minute and 14 seconds. Now it's time to go underground and fight my Mimic self to see who studied the blade better. Of course I was the one that came out on top. The cringe award goes to me, Mimic. Anyways, I pick up the Finger Slayer blade to give to Ronnie. Then set some fireplaces ablaze to fight the CWD deer. The fight took a lot longer than I would have liked. This was due to me using the lance to try to hit its skinny legs. I missed causing a lot of damage due to this. Also, it really loved to heal itself. Well, with the Regal Ancestor Spirit eliminated, I quickly pick up the Curse Mark of Death. 
and heading to the subterranean shunning grounds, aka the sewers, to make my way into the deep root depths. Also, I took a shortcut because I didn't feel like parkouring my way down. Now I make my way up the roots just to lose the fierce champions of all bosses. It's very easy to just cheese them with running attacks, but I just got too careless in my other attempts. With the simps out of the picture, I myself must dabble in a bit of simping just to fight the Lich Dragon. Fortifax will always be one of my top annoying bosses to fight because of the electricity around him. I can't hit the boss enough because of my constant fear of getting electrocuted. But even with that defense, he still falls the same as the other bosses. The fight took about 3 minutes and 47 seconds to complete. After the Lich Dragon is defeated, I pick up the Waifu doll, cheese the shade by getting it stuck behind some stone coffins, Marathon run my way through the Lake of Rot, just to fight the giant nerd's rope abomination from space. I swear, this boss looks like it belongs in Bloodborne rather than here in Elden Ring. Also, the Lance was not the best weapon to use against Estelle. I really need to stop using crust weapons against very skinny-legged enemies. Good thing its head is huge. And with one last hit, Estelle goes down in about 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Now it's time for this idiot to get engaged with Ronnie. <laughs> I hope you like this lance to the face, Ronnie. And she's gone. Now in an attempt to finalize my drip, I fight the Knight's Calvary here at the Forbidden Lands. But after defeating him and realizing that he doesn't drop what I'm looking for, it reminded me that the Knight's Cavalry at the Consecrated Snowfield are the ones that drop the drip. So for now, I go and fight the Fire Giant. Fire Giant status... Stance broken beyond belief. It's like a person the size of a puppy breaking your shins three times in a row. In the second phase, it's the same story. His stance was absolutely annihilated. Not the fastest I beat on him, but he went down in about 5 minutes and 2 seconds. With Fire Giant down, I go and finish up Nefeli's quest to get an ancient dragon smithing stone from her. Also then buy one from Gustok, who is to the left of Nefeli. It's time to upgrade my weapons again, but first I need to quickly run through Faramazula, ignoring the beast and dragons that live here. Just to fight the famous Ornstein and Smo. Wait a minute, this isn't Dark Souls 1. 
I mean the infamous God Skin Duo. Quite the difference. After bringing in nap time to the fight, and barely surviving a Fat Man attack, I take out good chunks of their boss bar. For the last one-fifth of the fight, I had to take them down the old-fashioned way. Mostly because I ran out of sleeping pots. And after 7 minutes and 17 seconds, Fat and Skinny goes down. And as a reward, I get the last smithing stone bell, number 4. With the godskins eliminated, I run through a field of electricity and warhawks to reach the grace under the great bridge. But before continuing, it's time to use up a good chunk of the runes I've been collecting to buy the last pieces of upgrade stones I need. Now all but one weapon is fully upgraded. Also time to sell all of my boss remembrances for another pretty big level up. And with all that done, it's time to challenge Dragonlord Placidasax. The former five-headed dragon is quite a chunky boss, so I kept the pressure up by constantly attacking his rear to break stance. My heavy attacks work some wonders. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. And because of Bloodhound Quick Step, it's easy to avoid the lasers for some extra bonus damage. And after dealing the last couple hits to his tail, the boss goes down in a total battle time of 4 minutes and 5 seconds. With the Dragon Lord down, it's time to do the last of the main optional Elden Ring content. So it's time to have a little fun with Castle Soul, not getting destroyed in the process this time around. Then challenge Commander Nile, the boss of this area. After deleting his little minions pretty easily, the boss on the other hand catches me off guard a few times. I was only able to stagger him once, but he gave a lot of good opportunities for jump attacks. This old man took about 3 minutes and 16 seconds to defeat. Remember everyone, respect the elderly. With access to the Hallig Tree secret medallion left and right, I went out to try to find the Knight's Calvary here, which led me to getting disrespected. I can't let that slide, so I got a bit of revenge. And eventually I found them and challenged them to a 1v1 jousting match. Your buddy disrespected me, so I disrespect you. Also took the second one out without much of a problem, fortunately. And as a reward for defeating these knights, I get their knight's cavalry armor and the last ancient dragon smithing stone I needed. It's time to remodify my fashion. So after altering the helmet and equipping the gauntlet, I have now completed my drip for the run. Now no one can catch me slipping. Not even the denizens of this town of machine gun arrows and invisible assassins. Teleports behind you. Nothing personnel, ghost snail. And after finalizing my Knight Rider flail upgrade, it's time to fight Halicree Loretta who I just flew around her attacks with utmost edge.
the boss battle took about 1 minute and 49 seconds to complete. After Loretta, it's time to make my way to the chamber that holds Elden Ring's most dangerous boss. The instant I got down here to her arena, I decided to just fight her right now rather than leaving it for later. And surprise, her first phase was a little too easy. The reach of this game's washing pole is insane. Pretty much just poked her knees the majority of phase one. Phase two starts with a good bleed proc. Afterwards, it's just a whole lot of dodging and weaving and hoping to not get caught with my pants down out of position. But with the large amount of Bloodhound step used, I was dangerously low on FP. Should have brought an extra blue flask because now I have to use my dodge skill more conservatively. And after teleporting behind her to finish the fight, Melania goes down in about 8 minutes and 48 seconds. With the biggest bad boss defeated, it's time to make my way to Moog's Palace of Blood, so I quickly defeat the Sanguine Noble here. Also went to get revenge on Eleonora for screaming at me at the start of the run. Your whales won't work on me, Karen. Because I got a promotion and now I'm the manager. Now I make my way to the top of the mausoleum, taking care of pesky enemies that get in my way, in order to challenge Moog, the Lord of Blood. It wasn't much of a difficult boss to fight with the high mobility I have. Also, the always burning blood everywhere is annoying. Pretty much fought him like anyone else, except that if I get knocked down, I'm at the mercy of the AI. Took about 4 minutes and 41 seconds to defeat. With the giant omen eliminated, I quickly get the blasphemous claws from Bernal to use against Malekith. And boy, did I have some trouble against Malekith. And it's mostly because of the roll catch attack that he can do. First phase was quick and easy with a flail to his face. On the dust and death phase, I need to be on point with a majority of my dodges as it's very easy to get knocked down by his attacks. Luckily, I was able to parry him around the end, which gave me the win. The fight against Malekith lasted about 2 minutes and 51 seconds, and I lost 3 times. With Faram Mazula finished, it's time to just cakewalk across Gideon, who loved to spam Melania's Scarlet Aeonia this time around. Summon Nefeli to aid me in this battle against Godfrey. You know I forgot that Nefeli is an absolute monster in this fight. The first phase went off without much of a problem except for a few cheap hits from Godfrey.
For the second phase, when Nefeli comes down from her trip to the moon from the Godfrey Space Program, we just aggressively attack with barely any brain cells in use, except for violence. And with that, Godfrey goes down in about 2 minutes and 5 seconds. That was a pretty short Godfrey fight. He didn't even get to use the Mega Slam at all, even with all the extra health. Also, Nefeli is quite a tank. Now, before the next battle, I think it's time to use all the rest of the gold runes and remembrances I've collected. With all these runes, I level up my mind and endurance. With my equipment set and ready, it's time to fight the final bosses. Now in the first battle, Radagon here couldn't take the amount of thrusting I was giving him. Seriously, even though he's weak to strike damage, the pierce damage is doing quite a number on him. With a few last risky hits, he goes down and now it's time to finish off the challenge run by fighting the Elden Beast. As long as it doesn't run away frequently, the Elden Beast can be easily melted with high stance damaging hits. physical attacks because barely a minute in and the boss is on less than half health. No amount of little Elden Stars, pocket sand from space, giant circles of doom, or holy sword slashes are gonna keep me away from beating the boss. Just like that, the other beast goes down, with both fights taking about 7 minutes and 13 seconds in total. And that's it everyone, the challenge run is finished. Barely any deaths this time around. It wasn't much of a challenging challenge run, but it was a challenge run nonetheless. It was a pretty fun and easy run. The weapons were pretty great to use as well. The Extendo Katana is pretty OP. The Lance is pretty cool to use, especially when I fall on horseback. And the flail was unfortunately a bit underwhelming with its small reach and okay damage. Also, I'm pretty sure I've now used every form of alternative dodging the game has to offer. Well, that's it everyone. I'm keeping the outro short this time. The next video should be a co-op challenge run video, or maybe even new content for the channel. But honestly, it's probably the co-op challenge run. It's an old suggested challenge run that I got when I first started doing co-op. So look forward to it. Well, this has been Warnock Gamer 4 and make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe and click the bell notification for alerts when I post a new video. And thanks for watching this video and my previous videos that we have as well. Later.